Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. And if we jump into Guidewire, just like any company that we see when we come into the Uniform Accounting Database in Valens Research, the first tab we land on is this PVP tab or the Performance Valuation Prime tab. And we call it the Performance and Valuation Prime tab because the name speaks to what it is. You'll find that's a trend that we have here at Valens. Uh, and the, specifically, we're focusing on performance. How is the company doing? What are its real returns? What's its real earnings growth? What's its real asset growth? And we're focusing on valuation, right? What is the market paying for the company? What, are, what is the market expecting the company to do in the future? And so the first chart here that you can see is ROA prime, which is return on assets. ROA prime means it's adjusted return on assets. So what we're showing here is two bars historically, right? You can see these dark blue bars are the true blue uniform accounting returns for Guidewire for the last seven years. Separate, separately, eight years. Separately, these orange bars that look very, very small here, <clears throat> those bars are what the distorted as reported ROAs are for Guidewire. And so the first thing that jumps out here for Guidewire is with Guidewire, you've got a company that as reported metrics are telling you this company's ROA went negative in 2018 and is basically 0% in 2019, when in reality, Guidewire has a 16% ROA. They are throwing off ample amounts of cash flow. And even though returns are shrinking, they're still very robust. The next chart that we're looking at is asset growth. Again, the same idea. The orange bars are the distorted as reported asset growth for this company. How much the company is reinvesting in its assets. Well, the blue, the true blue uniform accounting is how much the company is really investing. You can think of these two charts as really a representation for free cash flow, right? ROA is representing almost a, if you will, a more thoughtful way of thinking about operating cash flow. Well, asset growth represents a more holistic way of thinking about things like CapEx, how much a company is reinvesting in the business. So if you had $100 in Guidewire last year, Guidewire threw off $16 in operating cash flow, but it put $39 back into the business. Free cash flow last year was roughly negative $23 right, on a $100 asset base for Guidewire, if you think about it that way. Um, and that's really powerful because it helps us understand visually and quickly, is this company a good company or a bad company? Is it a company that's improving or declining? And is it a company that's investing or shrinking? But just understanding how a company's performing isn't enough to understand if a company is undervalued or overvalued. What we need to look at to understand that is then understanding valuations. And that's when the VA and VE come into play. VA is value to asset prime. These blue bars are our valued asset prime, our cleaned up price to book asset metric, which we can compare it to the orange as reported price to book equity metrics. And you can see the important relationship here that there is between ROA and valued asset prime ratio. As ROA rises and falls, so does the valued asset prime ratio. Why? Because markets tend to pay a premium or a discount for companies whose returns are above or below corporate average and cost of capital. The next chart we have here is our adjusted PE. We call it VE, value to, value to earnings prime ratio. And we have our as reported PE for Guidewire also. You can see Guidewire on either metric that we look at, a regular PE or our VE, does look expensive right now. But when you think about a company like Guidewire that has a 0% as reported ROA, you'd be scratching your head understanding why the market is paying 100 times earnings for a company like that because it's not a good business. But when we look at it in the context of this company has ramping asset growth and it has still robust ROAs, even if they fell slightly, it starts to make sense. And then the last chart we have here is TSRR. What does that mean? TSRR means total shareholder return. And for those of you who don't know, total shareholder return is the total return to equity holders of the business in terms of both stock appreciation and any dividend payouts they have. And the R, the second R, is relative. Relative to what? Relative to the market. And so what we're looking at here isn't just, is the company's stock up or down? It is it up or down more than the market already is up or down. And so when you see a flat line here, like you see here, that means that the company performed in line with the market. When you see a positive sloping line like here, that means the company 
outperform the market that year. And when you see a negative slope like this, that's when you see the company underperform the market. What you see is, well, oftentimes, like times like right now, as reported metrics can't help you make up, up or down in terms of whether or not the market's paying attention to fundamentals. When we actually overlay ROA and asset growth on a uniform accounting basis and TSR, things start to make sense, right? So here we have ROAs dropping and we have TSR dropping. Here we have stable ROAs, but the company's still investing aggressively, right? We have TSR rising. Here we have ROAs dropping and TSR dropped again, even though the company was investing because the market's paying attention to the real fundamentals. But what's really powerful here is what we can understand when we actually look at the true fundamentals and we understand what the market's pricing in. Right again, if you were looking at as reported metrics for Guidewire, you just throw up your hands and say at 100 times PE, it doesn't make any sense. This company is, and isn't generating any cash flow anyways. It's a, it's a worthless software company. Who cares? But using the uniform accounting metrics, all of a sudden what we can notice is, no, it's a company that's throwing off real returns and what the market's pricing in is for those returns to sustain. And that's when we get to these light blue bars and these white bars here. The light blue bars are what sell side consensus analyst estimates are for uniform accounting ROA. When we take sell side analyst estimates for things like as reported EPS, as reported revenue growth, as reported CapEx, among other things, and actually push it through the uniform accounting framework. So over the next two years, from 2019 to 2021, analysts expect uh, Guidewire to have returns drop from 16% to 7% and then start to recover up to 10% in 2021. So we do the exact same thing for asset growth where we highlight what are sell side estimates in essence forecasting for asset growth. But then these white bars for ROA and asset growth, that's what the market's pricing in right now at an $86 stock price for Guidewire or a $7 billion market cap for Guidewire. For Guidewire to be fairly valued right now, Guidewire would need to see returns recover from 7% this year to 20% in line with where they were before 2019 and to continue to have around 15% asset growth a year. In essence, the market's saying that this short-term dip is just that, a short-term dip, and they're going to recover, the business is going to recover while continuing to grow. Now, your obvious question might be, well, that's all well and good, but what happens if I think that Guidewire is actually going to have a new norm and that new norm is going to be slower growth, like they're forecasted for 2020, and returns to plateau at these lower levels? Well, if I expect that to happen, I can actually put those numbers in a very quick scenario analysis tool that we have here, and all of a sudden I can see, well, Guidewire would be worth basically half what it is today if I thought that that's what was going to happen for Guidewire. And this is what's incredibly helpful is, right, the uniform accounting metrics put the company's performance in the proper context and help you better model what you think realities are going to be for the company in the future. And that helps you understand what the company is really worth, right? If we look at this differently and we say, no, actually, this is a company that we think is going to keep on growing at even the, the level of 20% a year. And we also think it's going to recover to higher levels in terms of ROA. Well, if I think that that's the recovery the company is going to have, right, this company is slightly undervalued, right, around 30% undervalued. And that's the kind of tools that we can use using uniform accounting. Balance Research, the world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.